Welcome to the Sports Show, Mike Max, Patrick Royce, our basketball expert, Trent Tucker, on a basketball-type day, and the one and only Sid Hartman. We start tonight's show with some conversation about the selection show. The Minnesota Gophers will take on UCLA in the first round of the NCAA basketball tournament. How does that sit with you, Sidney? I don't know. Patrick told me I did something I didn't know, that they... Their best point guard broke his foot there. UCLA's. Yeah, I watched them the other night uh, lose to Oregon. They didn't look too good to me, but I, I, I just can't figure this go for foot, uh, basketball team out. Who can? I think they got good talent. I mean, they don't, they don't have any bench, but they got six pretty good players. And Blockway is as good a player as Minnesota have for a long time. And... Uh, they step out of bounds to lose the game. I mean, <laughs> they just do the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. Trent, Trent are we going to find out here, though, that the Big Ten was really, really good and, and, and Minnesota can beat teams like UCLA and Florida? Are we, are we, did we find out that the Gophers are just a disappointment this season? Well, you know, I believe they have the talent, you know, to do well, you know, during this tournament. But the big question is, will they live up to that talent? We've seen them beat some good teams throughout the, throughout the season, especially in the non-conference season. They beat Indiana, they beat Illinois, and they found a way to come back and beat the Badgers. So we know this team can play, but which team will show up come Big, ten, uh, big Dance time? Patrick? I was trying to break down why they've struggled so much to score points. Uh, nine of the last 14 games, they didn't exceed 53. Boy, that's a little and uh, I was talking to Chip Scoggins, our columnist at our paper, and Chip said, they can't shoot. And I got to agree with him. When you can't shoot, you struggle to score points. Andre Hollis is the only guy that's really a shooter. Austin Hollis did okay early, but he's been terrible the second half. Rodney's not a shooter. Coleman's not a shooter. Uh, there are other wing players. This Oceanix they thought could shoot, and he's like two for 100. He's out of the three. rotation, yeah. So, uh... They just can't shoot the ball. Okay, let me ask I'll you. I'll bet you if you looked at Wisconsin's games, they haven't scored more than 50 yeah, points. Yeah, but that's the way they game. play. That's the way they play. Uh, they want to play that and way. And a few other teams haven't scored more they than 50 They want to play teams. that way. So the you don't think is. that's a bad sign that you got an athletic team and you're, you haven't scored over 53 in The nine, whole league nine doesn't points. score. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I saw some pretty nice uh, performances by Ohio State and... Uh, and, I don't know. They had 81 at Indiana, the second game of the mm -hmm. or third, fourth game of the Big Ten. I thought about three games ago, and I still think they might do this this week. Is they're going to give the ball to Andre Hollins and say, "This is your team." Go make something happen. You know, to add to Patrick's point, you know, when you struggle from the outside, and, and we know this team has struggled in half court, I would like to see them press and trap a little bit more to extend the game defensively to see if they can force some turnovers. Because they're quick enough. And because when they get out into transition, that's when they're pretty good. And the guys who are on the wings like Rodney Williams and Joe Coleman, when they can get some easy baskets to start the game, it builds their confidence throughout the game. And, yeah, UCLA played, once that kid got hurt, UCLA played six guys all but six guys played all but four minutes in the conference title game. Uh, if it's ever said, press me, it's this team. Isn't yes, it? uh -huh. yeah, mean, right there. You can wear them down. Dragon. You can wear them down. Well, and the yeah. other thing is we have no idea what this Pac-12 is made of versus the Big Ten because the Pac-12 has been bad the last couple of years. Well, I mean, at this time of the year, anything can happen, but you want to have your best game. And I think right now the best game for the Gophers is when they can press and trap the ball and force those turnovers. You saw Joe Coburn have the game against Illinois. It wasn't because he was doing it in the half court. He was out in transition. Sydney? The thing is they prove they can beat some good Team. Sure. They proved they can beat some good teams. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be UCLA playing. The one huh? thing I don't agree with Tubby, and I wrote about it tomorrow, Mabakwe gets two fouls with about five minutes in the game. He takes them out and puts them on the bench. They get 10, 12, 15 behind. You got to put them back in. The two foul first half rule, what do you think, Trent? You know, I'm okay with that. It's because if he picks up a, a early third, and then you're in real trouble because you don't know how the officials are going to call the game the rest of the way. And when you see a guy get a cheap foul called against him, you have to get him out of the game because you cannot afford for him to pick up a third early in the first half. I can guarantee it'll be a higher scoring game than the last time the Gophers played you. UCLA in the tournament, though, because if there. you look in the record book, it was zero to zero. zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, were, we were there. That was in San Antonio. Oh, that and that fun. was the game to go yes. to the Final Four. Were you there when the Gophers went to San Antonio? No, I wasn't. They had a the young coach we, named Steve Lavin. 
We took over the Minnesota's. The maroon sweaters took oh. over the town. There were 20,000 people. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was unbelievable. Because uh, uh, that was the one to go to the Final Four in Indianapolis where they yeah. lost. But that, that was honestly one of the, and, and Patrick, you've been doing this and Sid longer than I, one of the pinnacle moments. I mean, oh, just yeah. to see Minnesota fans show up and draw. And then like the that. Clemson game was. Really? Yeah, Minnesota? double overtime. Mm -hmm. Great game. Yep. Great game. So Minnesota fans will travel. Well, we were walking down that uh, water River? thing, River people walk. screaming River at you yeah. from all sides. It was unbelievable. Well, there were 20,000 Minnesotans yeah. there. Yeah, and Easy. they got there right now. You know, yeah. Now, granted, they were number one seeds. So they had an idea that they might advance. So, Trent, as a shooter, if you, if you lock Rodney Williams and Joe Coleman and some of these guys in the gym all day, and you just say, shoot, 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 will they become good shooters, or is there something almost innate or hardwired about your hand-eye and all those things that either you have it or you don't? Well, you have to work at it, but also you have to have someone that can teach you the technique of shooting. And when you see guys who struggle from the outside like they have, the technique is not in the right place. But for them, it's all about out in transition, because you know, they're good finishers. At this time of the year, it's too late to go back into the sure gym and work on that now. Someday... <clears throat> When you're an old man and you're retired and you got nothing to do, you should get all the videotapes from your career and see how many threes you shot. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Right. That'd be fun. Right. You were almost on the out of bounds line. Sometimes. You know, along with Daryl Mitchell, and we had a, a wonderful inside game. You know, with Randy Brewer inside and outside because most of our points came from from outside of 20 feet because yeah. we had such a good inside game. What do you remember about their team, Sydney? It was a good team, and. Uh, they had, uh, they played as a unit, and they were consistent. I mean, they didn't play like this team, get beat by Ohio State by 20, get beat by Nebraska. Well, but in your earlier years, you guys had some ups and downs. Well, we were last too young. year, you remember, it was a big championship. Well, we were yeah. young. We were, we, were, we were a young basketball team. And when I came in the 1978, you know, we almost started three or four freshmen. And we had Kevin McHale was a sophomore at that time. And the Big Ten was really tough because no one left to go to the NBA that's early. A good point. You come in and play against guys like Magic Johnson Magic and, and, Kelsey, and Ryan yeah. Lester and, and uh, Calvin Ramsey. You know, those are tough guys to deal with. Yeah, that's a good point. Trent Tucker in studio, the sports show. Back with more basketball talk after this. Oh, word to Pat and the crew at J.D. Hoyt's. Paul McDonald's coming to town this week for the State Boys Basketball Tournament. So prepare your best dish. Which in a one's he of, now? Where's he coach? Paul's one of the coaches at Vermilion Community College. Oh, they're hard to keep track of. Yeah, he, he's, he's the basketball coach, the AD, and he referees high school games. <laughs> so How's Dad doing since his car came back, accident? He came back and coached in the tournament. Okay, so good. he's good. better. We were, we were talking uh, as he watched his Big Ten tournament. Would you, Trent, would you, if you were another coach, would you take the risk and say, I'm going to play Bull Ryan basketball where I don't need to get the best recruits, but I'm going to be in the tournament and I'm going to be really good every year? I don't think anyone else could be Bull Ryan. <laughs> you, you think that there's a certain discipline to being able to teach that or what? I mean, it's his style. I mean, I have no idea some nights on how they win basketball games, but there his, they are. his kids have bought into his system. You know, he, he recruits the right kids for his system and every single time they go out to play, they give you a great effort. You don't turn the ball over. They're smart kids. And they defend. Huh? And they defend. They defend. They He's got, he's got the most disciplined basketball team in the country. He took this kid from over in St. Paul. Nobody even... Bruce Witz. Division two teams were taking him. <laughs> Hamlin, St. Thomas. <laughs> well, we would have taken him. He took him. All of a sudden, I'll watch him today. He makes a big three-pointer. Uh, I don't know how he does it, but they don't make mistakes. They play smart basketball. Whoever, who was the AD there that was smart enough to hire him to follow up Dick Bennett? Because Dick Bennett played the same basketball. Well, yeah, Soderbergh. And they never had remember, to change right. that. Very ever. Soderbergh, Soderbergh had come Soderbergh in to replace what, a Bennett. Mm -hmm. A year or two? And just, I think, in the middle of the year, Bennett left. Soderbergh took over, so a lot of people thought he'd get the job. And instead, they said, no, we're going to go to Wisconsin and Milwaukee. They, they just play the same basketball. Yeah. Very yeah. ever, so I hired him. Was it out? No, it was it was Richter. Richard Harris. Richter hired him. Yeah. Richard Harris some pretty good. I want to know this. How I did saw him play Florida this year, and I went on Twitter and said, "This is the year his team doesn't make the tournament." And the Wisconsin people are still sending me nasty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, how, how did he go that long, Trent, without getting a big time job? I mean, he was seen? at Platteville winning all the time. And what you see is, if a guy can coach, he can coach, huh? Well, you know that he got the job over Joe Maturi at Platteville. 
Yeah, and you know something else? <laughs> Joe Maturi tried to hire him at Denver, and, and the AD there, no. and the president wouldn't let him, and Maturi right. quit because right. he wouldn't let him hire Boron. I mean, he's a uh, wonderful basketball coach. I mean, he does a good job, like Sid say, you know, his players are very disciplined. They take care of the basketball, and when you can take care of the basketball, it gives you a great chance to win many of the games. He coached for a long time, and before he got a chance to get, get a job, it's what I'm saying. How did he? He, he was, was winning the, and winning and winning. He was not the first choice for uh, for Wisconsin either. But I mean, he he was unbelievable. His record at Platteville, then he got to Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and he won there. I'd hate to be a ref and have to listen to him the whole game. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but he won the Big Ten championship his first three years in the league. Well, he you know, he's always had a pretty good point guard. He had Devin Harris, who was pretty good. He put a premium on that. And then he Cam had, and, Taylor, and, and, and then, then he had uh, Jordan, Jordan Taylor. Taylor. You know, so he's always had someone that could run his team very well. Yeah. Indiana, I mean, Wisconsin had Bobby Knight hired, and he went back to West Point. They weren't supposed to announce it, and they announced it, and he wouldn't. They had a chance to get Knight and Schembechler at the same time, and they blew both of them by shooting their mouth off. Well, you're not going to tell us about how we almost had Wooden tonight, are you? We had Wooden. wooden. <laughs> <laughs> Snowstorm. He would have been wooden, here. Right, right. Wooden. You could have played for done. Johnny Wooden. I could have played for Johnny Wooden. <laughs> wooden would have never done what he's done here. He wouldn't have that car dealer where there's a car <laughs> parking in the parking lot. And, uh, what do you mean? Mussy had a car dealer. Yeah. Did he ever <laughs> look at the NCAA no, I investigation? Did. I bet he did. So, Sid, tell me about, you know, this, like today, the big selection Sunday, and we all tune in at 5 o'clock to see who makes it. W when do you remember this whole thing exploding, the NCAA basketball tournament? Because for a long time, it was just, it was barely on the map, was it? We had an NCAA tournament at Williams Arena. Kentucky played somebody. There weren't 5,000 people. Yeah, that in the was place. 51 or two. But huh? 50, that far back? Yeah. I got to. When was Bill Walton? When did Bill Walton go 21 out of 22? 73. 73. I was I looking through Memphis. some old stuff in the Star Tribune. And the day of the national semifinals, I was looking for something about the fifth page. There was an AP story of about four graphs in two short form. Box scores, and then including Walton's game against Memphis. Really? Yes. So that was well, forty TV, years ago. Right. Yeah. TV. When they got their first good TV contract, contract, whatever that year was, it kept on getting better, better, better. People were exposed to it for the first time. I remember Harold Olson was coaching Northwestern, and before that, he was coaching Ohio State, and he and a bunch of coaches. Uh, had a lot to do with starting this whole thing. and But until they got the TV, uh, it wasn't that big. Yeah, in, 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 Northwestern fire and Carmody. Yeah, yeah I was surprised at that. I mean, it's been the same. I don't know what, what needs to change because yeah, it's always been the same. Yeah, how do they think they're going to get any better? They made the tournament, Northwestern? No, they no. fired their coach, Bill They Carmody. fired Carmody. Yeah. Oh, he plays talk about boring well, basketball. What else are you going to do? <laughs> I you bet know? he's close to 500 against the Gophers. Boy, yeah. he sure had their number. <laughs> oh, painfully. So They're talking about bringing in Doug Collins' kit from Duke. What's that? They're talking about bringing in Doug Collins' kit. Well, from, that makes oh, sense. From Duke. Chris Collins. Yeah, Chris Collins, yeah. yeah the Bucknell coach might get a shot, yeah. too. Yeah. Trent, do you remember? Somebody said to me that, it was, you know, obviously everybody remembers Magic against Larry changing the world in 79 or whatever it was. But they said two years before that, the UNLV running Rebels, we couldn't see them here because they're never on TV, but they're scoring over 100 a game. Right. And, and they and they created as much fan fans. They had the Fro's, man. They had the Fro's. And they had Reggie Fierce. They had Reggie Fierce, right, yeah. Looked like five helicopters <laughs> going down the court, man. <laughs> yeah, is that Theus's kid that plays for Virginia Commonwealth? I'm not sure. Not? I'm not sure. By the way, they're not that impressive to watch. Everybody talks about Shaka Smart. I watched him against St. Louis today. They look, okay. you know. Okay, nothing great. I mean, when you're talking about who changed the game. You know, Magic and Larry, when they came on the scene in 79 for that NCAA yeah. championship game, that put March Madness on the map. I'll say this. For years and years, that was my favorite thing to cover. Final I covered four. It for 20 years in a row, and that was the greatest event of all. Well, it's still a great event. We just haven't had much success around here lately. Take a break, come back. Yeah, I say I had Bruce Boney and the old crew right there off of Wyzetta Boulevard, General Mills Boulevard, 394. Stop on by, take a Q7 for a test drive and find out what uh, truth and engineering really means. Yeah, it's a great place to go, Audi Minneapolis. I'd like to ask Trent Tucker a question. Is it ever a good idea 
when you have two great players to trade one of them, like our Vikings did this week? Well, no, but if, if there's one guy that, you know, who's not going to fit into the plan, then you may have to. How, how, how bad a fit do you, because Sid's always told us, players. give me the players, baby. Bud Grant always told you, give me the players. How bad a fit do you have to be? To get trade. Well, if, if, if the guy's going to disrupt the locker room, and if he's not, if he's not willing to be a teammate and be a team player, and if he's going to be a total distraction, then you may have to make a move. Because it's got to be pretty bad, though. Yeah, because he, the, I think he was pretty bad. Yeah, because the one thing the coach cannot afford to do is to come to practice every day and, have to, and, and have to deal with him. Well, Childress, he blew up on too. When he didn't show up, he had a players reform. But then when he didn't show up for none of the playoff games. And not he around there, them. that was the end. Yeah, he lost them all. And yeah, not, let's put it this way. They would not have traded him if they didn't get what they got. They'd have taken the chance. But when they came up the first, the seventh, and the third, and they were working behind the scenes on, on Jennings off for a long time. They were pretty sure they could get, get Jennings. I don't think you can put those two guys in the same breath, though. Greg no. Jennings is no, good. No, no but you Greg got... Jennings is good, but every time the football's near Percy Harvin, if I'm playing defense, I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. But you got to look at it as Jennings, the first round, sure. instead of the third, right? Sure. It's I know. Big problem is... I know, but, you know, big, we've always, you know, big you problem. trade Johan Santana, what do you get back? The big problem yeah. is you don't know when he's going to play. They didn't know it was a migraine. Said he'd only missed three games in the previous three years until yeah. he sprained yeah. the ankle. Yeah. He only missed three games. And he's a talent now. I mean, he's going to be he's going to be great for Seattle he could be hell with that offense and Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch and, and <laughs> Percy Harvin. NFC better look out. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> play, you, you play with Michael Jordan, obviously the the greatest of all time, or however you want to categorize. Okay. Him. So if if there was a troubled player like that, can one guy go over and change him? And you can. I, I mean, you know, there's a peck and order on certain teams. Man, uh, sometimes the best player can go over and talk to this guy to find out exactly what's going on. But if a guy makes up his mind that he doesn't want to be here, there's nothing nobody else Probably can do. Probably especially in football where you can kind of cover it up. In basketball, if you got a great player and he decides to be a jackass, it's all over. Gotta, yeah, it's right. all over. <laughs> But, like, obviously, he controlled Rodman to an extent. And some See, but guys. Rodman wasn't a bad guy. Rodman was a great teammate. Now, what, well, he, yeah, did, he now, 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 now what he did off the court was different. Yeah. But when he came to work, he, he worked every night. Yeah. Yes. Sid, what were you going to say? He wasn't going to report here. And uh, behind the scenes, there's a lot of cheating going on behind the scenes. Telling him, don't report. We'll make a deal for you and all that kind of stuff. Cheating? And don't who? forget, I mean, not, not cheating. And we're working on whatever the description is. Daryl Bevel was there as the offensive coordinator. And you can bet. Tampering? Huh? Are you accusing Seattle of tampering? I think they might have tampered a little bit. Pete, 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 Pete Carroll would Fred not Farm, tamper. But, uh, <laughs> Pete Carroll would not tamper. <laughs> Sid knows him well. He would, <laughs> Pete Carroll would not tamper. I don't say he tampered. But they could have somebody tell him, we'll make a trade. We're getting for close. Him. Don't. Don't report. Yeah, and then, and then he goes to that press conference, and, and he's a charmer. You know, oh, that's yeah. Percy. Well, he can be anything he wants to be, but man. We did it. We tampered with yeah, a, a real basketball player. Ooh. Now Pe you can tell. Pep Sol, but yeah, very you honest tamper, with tampered with a pepper? Uh-oh. They were going to. I hope Scurge's not listening. <laughs> oh, I might man. take one of those trophies away. <laughs> what, what, what happened? How'd you tamper? They were going to trade him to somebody else, and... Uh, we got word of him. Herman Schaefer called him and says, we're going to get you. Don't don't go. Pep's all. Two hands. Two hands. Two hands. Right. He's a, you, see, you tampered <laughs> with the pepper. No, never I'm, tried I'm, that one. I got to tell no, you. I never worked on that one. <laughs> this does to an extent there's take the little bit of the way I feel about the magic yes, he was working. Let me tell you. There's more of that going on than you think. Well, I'm very disappointed and shocked to hear that. Take a break. <laughs> come back. Oh. There it is, place to the table, now playing at the Uptown Theater, bringing your ticket stub to Bar Abilene and receive a free order of guacamole and chips. Man, that looks good. At Bar Abilene, Wayne Kostrowski getting it done right. Timberwolves won the night against hey! New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, we got to get six wins to get uh, Adelman to the big number in case, 1, in case he wants career to wins. retire yeah. or something. Right. What do you think Rick Adelman is a coach? You played against him? I like him as a coach. I mean, you know, he's a guy that, you know, that puts the team together. He knows how to fit players into a system where they can be successful. Sydney? You win, like Bud always says, <laughs> coach is coach, and players win. And you don't have players. The only thing I keep on 
thinking when they did have everybody healthy and love and everything, there were 13 and 11. They weren't setting the world on fire then. Yeah, and but they love Rubio, didn't play at the but start. But they had everybody the, else. Yeah, and then love didn't play at the start of the season. I mean, he didn't have either of them for what the first. When did Love come back? Ten games into the schedule or something? December 1st, something yeah, like that. Yeah. He hasn't had his team all year. They need, you know what they need? They can't shoot either. Yeah. They need <laughs> Buttinger. They can't shoot either. I'll say they're letting Derek Williams play finally, and he's yes. up around 18 points a game in the last six, seven games. Do you like his game or not? No, I, I like what I've seen from him. Anytime you have a chance to play, it's going to help your confidence. And now when you draft a guy at number two, you're hoping to find some minutes for him. With Kevin Love going down to Gabe, yeah, if you can't find minutes for him now. Do. And he has played well for this team as of late. You know what I, I like about Derek him? Play more. They asked him to lose 20 pounds, and he did, and he kept it off. He's in good yeah, shape. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I I've never understood. Why can everybody be mad at him? I don't I mean, get it. I've never understood why Rick Gettleman didn't seem to like him that much. I, I don't know. I don't either. Who? Derek Williams. Derek Williams is a pretty good player. And they finally had, they had to play him. And he's pretty darn good. They're lucky they didn't trade him. Yeah. They'd have won less games. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're right. That's right. possible. Trent, thanks so much. Thanks for having us. Yes, Back sir. here next right, week, thanks. everybody, on the Sports Show. See you then.